everyone, and happy Saturday! My name is Callie, and this is another week of Clarinets, Cats, and Coffee. In today's video, I am I'm really just going to talk about scales, my favorite scale methods, and, and how to go about getting good at scales, and, and when you're ready for Albert scales, and I'm just going to answer a bunch of questions about scales. Before we do that though, I want to thank my Patreon community. It has been such a pleasure getting to know you guys over the past few months and I want to just thank you so much for supporting my channel. Now if any of you guys are interested, I have a, a $3 tier. It's just once a month, $3 and it's a nice little way to say thank you and to support my channel and it's you know specifically for my YouTube viewers so if you guys have found my channel to be helpful and useful please considering becoming a patron. Now I also do teach private lessons online so if any of you are looking for that extra push or a little bit of feedback or you know you just have some very specific questions about your playing please reach out to me. I do not go through any kind of agency so the messages you guys send me through my website go directly to me and if you if you get in touch I will try to respond within a day I'm, I'm pretty good at getting back with um, back with you guys so please let me know if you're interested in private lessons I would love to work with anybody who has found me on YouTube okay so scales ah oh my gosh scales it's so fundamental to our playing right we need scales to make us better at all different kinds of music and uh, it's just the building blocks of, of, of music and technique, right? I know the title of this video is um, about mainly about Albert scales, but um, I'm just gonna kind of give you guys a couple of different levels to work at on your own to make sure you're really improving your technique and your finger dexterity. So before you can even think about Albert scales, make sure you know your major and minor scales. Make sure you can do them from memory and that you're 100% confident with all of the fingering. So that means no sliding pinkies. If there are alternate fingerings for those keys, you want to make sure that you know them. So I'm going to include a PDF download and that's totally free in the description of this video and it's going to have major and minor scales. I'm going to include some of my um, fingering tricks here and there for alternate fingerings and so that'll be kind of like your preparation guide to just make sure that your scale technique is great and that you know all of that stuff. So that's basically level one. Level two, you want to make sure that you can play with a metronome. And I know that sounds elementary and maybe kind of dumb, like Cali, duh, I can use a metronome, we use it in band. But do you really, you want to train yourself to play accurately with a metronome. So that means you have to listen and you have to stay with it, you have to subdivide, and the rhythm lives in your fingers. You have to make sure your hands and your fingers can do whatever you're trying to do with the metronome, okay? So if you're one of those people that has trouble staying with a metronome, don't worry. There is an intermediate level method book, which is actually this one. It's by Nora Schaefer. It goes two octaves through every single scale and very, very um, basic um, intermediate level counting, right? So all eighth notes, basically. So um, except the first one and you have uh, half notes and every so often you have quarter notes and stuff in here. And so it says intermediate, but it it is actually quite a challenge, especially if you've never done some of these patterns before. So if you've never done a scale in thirds, if you've, you know, not spent that much time playing higher altissimo stuff, it can be a little bit of a challenge. But like the Albert scale method, it goes one key every, every two pages. So you spend two pages in C major, two pages in A minor. And the idea is to do one key per week you use it as your warm up, you learn these patterns, you play with a metronome. And so my basic thing is to just make sure that you can play these accurately with a metronome after one week. So when I use this, that's basically what I expect from my students. Now, once you're good at that, then you can move on 
to Albert Scales finally. And Albert Scales, you know, if you've if you've learned your major keys and your minor keys, and then you've gone through something like the Schaefer Scale book, I'll leave a link below um, for you guys to check out the Schaefer Scale book. Um, it there is a promo code, um, so be sure to use that if you're interested in buying it. Um, and um, yeah, so I'll put that just below my my free PDF download of the major scales. Anyway, so there's PDF, there's that, oh there's the Schaefer scales. Now, once you're on the Albert scales, um, you are totally ready for, once you've done all of that, you're totally ready to do speed training on Albert scales. So in your first session of, of Albert scales, you do, you spend a few minutes on C major and you try to figure out what your top speed is going to be for the week. Now your top speed is going to be something that is almost sight readable, just a little bit faster than you can think, but not impossible. So you want to choose a tempo that is achievable within one week of practicing every day for 30 minutes a day and no more. So exactly that much. So my first time through the book, I did the 16th notes at 120 and I did the six tuplet triplet subdivisions at 104. And that was, that was enough for me, especially in the harder key signatures and the more awkward fingerings. So number one, you figure out what your goal tempo is for the book and it's going to be every single key signature. That's your goal. Number two, don't expect yourself to be able to play at that top speed on day one. What you need to do is set aside 30 minutes every single day. Take your metronome and start your metronome every single day at 60. Play the whole page down. Even if you know you can play it perfectly at 60, you have to do it at 60 every day. You are training your fingers to be accurate, to sound even and, and, and beautiful at every single single tempo, okay? And you're reviewing all of your tempos every single day, okay? Almost all of your tempos, right? So every day at 60, play the whole page down. If it's perfect, then you go up two clicks. If that's perfect, you go up two more clicks. Say that time, maybe you're stuck at 72 and that's day one and it's already been maybe five or 10 minutes or something. You get to 72 and you get stuck part way down on those darn arpeggios. So maybe you spend 10, 15 minutes just at that tempo to get it to sound good. And say, okay, you get it. You can play the whole page of 72, perfect, great. You move on to 80, you get part way down the page. Oh no, 30 minutes is up, you're done, you put it away. You are finished with your practice session for that day. But don't worry, it's only day one and you're already at, you know, a couple of clicks in a little bit closer. So day two, start back at 60. And I promise, you're not gonna forget what you did the day before. So you'll fly through 60, you'll fly through 66, 72. Maybe you've got to review a little more at 80 and then you move on. So the whole idea is to go a tiny bit faster than you did the day before. So that way, after an entire week of all of those slow repetitions, gradually inching forward, you will have reached your goal tempo, something that is impossible for you to sight read at, but totally achievable to do 30 minutes a day using the two click method every single day over the course of a week. So make sure you only stick to one key per week. And if you do that, you'll be done with the whole book in 24 weeks. And the last thing I want to just reiterate, you want to make sure that you really, really listen to the metronome. Make sure you're staying right in the center of the beat and make sure in the slow, easy tempos that you're not just going through the motion, just blowing through your clarinet and playing notes. You have to focus and you, and, and um, actually there's a term called deliberate practice, right? You have to practice with intention. You have to have a goal for your practice, right? Everything you do should have a purpose to it. So perhaps at 60, you're main focus, not, 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 you know, 
speed, right? What are you going to think about? You're going to think about tone. You're going to think about air. You're going to think about embouchure. And you're going to think about moving your fingers as fluidly as possible and perhaps keeping your fingers close to the keys. So all of a sudden you pile all of those things to think about all in one very easy tempo and it becomes a challenge but you become better. So the only way to get better is to really think about what you're doing, have a purpose in what you're doing, and just have the intentional practice and, and the intention in your mind when you're practiced to make, it, to make it sound really, really good. Now, after you finish your Albert Scale book, uh, if you want to go through the book again, be my guest. I've gone through this book so many times and I think the last time I did it um, I aim, I was aiming for like 176 for the 16th and 144 for the 6th tuplet. Now if you need a change after your 24 re weeks of the Albert Scale book, I actually recommend getting the height edition of the Behrman Scales. And it just goes through every key, just like the Albert Scale, just like the Schaefer Scale. But you actually practice these in more than two octaves. So some of these scales are three octaves, some of them are two and a half, some of them are even higher, right? So you do full range all the way up, all the way down, and it's great. And you do all these different patterns, you even do octave leaps and everything. And so I do speed training through that as well. So I rotate through the Albert scales and I rotate through the Behrman scales as well, well to change things up. So that's that's basically the four different levels of, of scales that I highly recommend. One, memorize. Two, Schaefer scales. Three, Albert scales. Four, Behrman. And you do speed training on all of those and you want to choose tempos that are a little too difficult to sight read but achievable within one week. And you do this over and over again as part of your, your practice routine and your technique will be flawless and you'll be able to sight read in every single key signature and life will just be wonderful. All right, guys, that is pretty much it. So I hope you enjoy practicing these scales. If any of you, I think some of you have already started Albert scales when you've asked me about scale methods. And so I'm curious to know how that's going for you guys. Um, you know, I hope you guys enjoy practicing this stuff and um, making this part of your daily routine. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you next week for another episode of Clarinets, Cats, and Coffee. And as always, happy practicing.